So our youngest sweet corn looks fabulous. We have good, good weed control. Though sweet corn, uh, we've done a good job on sweet corn management. Uh, the next to last batch of sweet corn is starting to canopy. Uh, really nice. It, this was my first good batch of sweet corn that didn't have a, a tsunami uh, land on it. That that part was good. So, but and and it shows. It shows. It's a good bunch of sweet corn right there. My second planting uh, of sweet corn. It's wanting to go to tossel. It's coming right in line. Now this this particular batch had the tsunami and high winds and hail uh, when it was a young plant. Now it's still a good stand, but it did affect the growth of the plants. That's, that's one thing I can say. It affected the growth of the plants. Then we get into our first planting of sweet corn. Now this variety is... Uh, <laughs> got some weed pressure in here, but not it's not as bad as it looks right here at the aisle way uh, But we have our first batch of sweet corn and This is a uh, matriarch and matriarch is a, a 84 days a 74 day Sweet corn and it looks like it's going to be a pretty good ear it's, it's looking like everything's coming on and with this half inch rain is wonderful for us our uh, first, um, our, our short season, 64-day corn is called Kickstart. And it, it's, you know, we needed that rain for it as well to kind of help fill those kernels out. Although, this corn went through hail. You can see the strip leaves up here. We have that. Uh, the downside to this is I am seeing a, a ton of blister beetles on the crop and you know it's uh, there they are stripes uh blister beetles and so i'm gonna have to get in here and deal with those guys because it, you just you got to keep that population low i don't need a ton of eggs in here uh we did have a raccoon one raccoon get in um i found where he moved the moved the uh uh he must have started climbing got a little bit of a shock but and he forced his way in once that happened but i i i think i i'm hoping we ran him out when we came in here and uh dealt with it so i hope to i didn't experience, see any more damage last night and if the coon, if the coon would have been in here we would have definitely seen more damage than what was previously done uh there's one i just looked at that's the newest that's our that's kickstart it's a nice full ear and uh it looks good now i'm starting to see some uh you know the the white moths uh that are there they're, we're fortunate our first batch um i don't see any don't see any worms or anything out of the few that we've gotten but uh I'm, i am you know the longer you go in the seasons well you start worrying about your subsequent crops here have an earworm damage so they're starting to the moths are flying and they'll be laying their eggs and that type of thing the one good thing for us this year is the neighbor uh our good friend uh brent has field corn and that's actually good for us look at look at them blister look at them blister beetles right there they're everywhere in here so um definitely it could affect our crop yields but the thing is is that if they have corn over there then they can be they become just as attractive as our field so i mean i don't want nothing bad to happen on uh brent uh but at the same token is it takes a little of the pressure off of us when our neighbors do have some corn here now because we become an island here in kansas we just uh if we look around there's a lot of pasture all around my area here and when all of a sudden you happen to have the only corn in the area well that's where they're going to go right there's <laughs> and last year was a bad tough year for us because he he was growing green uh soybeans next door so we became the island so there's one thing i, I wanted to point out for those of you that uh, uh question whether or not you have 
uh is it raccoon damage or is it uh or is it uh deer damage that's affecting your corn well i'll show you this particular you're going to notice that how the sweet corn or your corn is laid over on its side well that's that's what's that's what raccoons do they 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 will lay it down we'll just walk through here and i'll show you see how they lay it down and they pull it over and that's that's raccoon damage and uh that's what they do and and it isn't it is you know i don't think it was a whole family group but boy look at all them blister beetles they are stripping the leaves well i had to get in here and deal with them today um use some perithian and get rid of those guys and uh yep it's a nice organic but yeah that's what they do you know he they sporadically just come in here but this is what it was yesterday so i don't see any more pressure on i don't see any more real real uh sweet corn damage so i think we're in good shape right in here well i know what probably some of you are saying that i'm spraying for um insects and it's a you know it's unsafe to humans and that type of thing well the spray i'm using is actually considered safe for the organic community it's um uh, perithian and it is uh from um uh, from a flower family a chrysanthemum flower i believe is from that family and what it does it can be actually be used up to the day of harvest which makes it very safe uh, especially on vegetables where we're harvesting daily out here on the farm. Uh, I don't spray on the day I'm harvesting, but my point being is that it's a very safe drug. It has no real withdrawal date and it's safe to humans. So, and it, it leaves no harmful residue behind. And so <clears throat> something that I don't think is talked about on many vegetable farming videos is how you take care of this and there's neem oils and there's different things like that but uh perithian is a very affordable uh economic way to uh, uh deal with larger volumes of uh production if you if i just had a few uh corn plants you know 10 foot row you know four rows of of, of sweet corn or pumpkins or something along that way you have you know you have other options you can do but when you're talking a larger volume, you need to go with something that's even more economical than even neem oil and that type of a thing. So I uh, got my backpack sprayer. Let's go ahead and uh, get in there and spray. We're going to go down each row, down each row, but I'll cover two aisles at a time. That's kind of how we're going to do it. So uh, join me. Now, this is the backpack sprayer I'm going to use to spray, uh, to spray the corn. It's a... Um, we only use this for uh, perithian uh, that way, uh, and we do use some herbicides, believe it or not, but uh, in this case, uh, I don't wanna have any problems uh, going from a herbicide that the last thing I sprayed was maybe for corn, and then I turn right around and I spray insects with it on, on my pumpkins or something like that. So this is my perithian sprayer. Uh, we'll go ahead and get, uh, get going here. Just got to get it hooked on. There we go. And what I'll do is I always like walking. I'll step over my electric fence. But I like walking into the wind and walking backwards and just spray. Because we've seen a lot of... We've, and this way I'm covering two rows at the same time. We've seen an awfully lot of blister beetles on this corn and they're eating the leaves. Here's a beetle right there. Let me go ahead and keep going and uh, we'll get back to each other. This is the uh, the blister beetle now that I've sprayed them, and you can see how it affects their central nervous system. And um, you know they they go pretty quick here uh, in that sense, but when they but they were very damaging. 
uh, to the sweet corn and they're they're off the plant for the most part and now they're down on the ground and um, you know we don't need to watch anymore but it certainly has affected them in how they go I'll show you this is that they've literally stripped and ate a lot of my silks on the corn and they're actually affecting my next batch of sweet corn as well but I'll if I can find it um, and I will find right there see how they've just totally uh, eaten off the silk off of there and I'm really concerned about our new corn here that they get eaten the silk before it gets pollinated they get eaten the silk before it's pollinated well we don't have a ear of corn and um, I'm happy I caught it when I did but it's it's very damaging you can see those ears and how they've totally stripped it not to mention the leaves uh, where the plants uh, can photosynthesis get photosynthesis this is I don't know what did this I don't think it was a raccoon I just think they got in there and uh, started uh, eating up the leaves they were able to get in but see how they've just totally uh, molested these plants look at that look how they've chewed it up now part of that was hail up here but down below those are blister beetles so very important to, to keep your eyes on it uh, those are just uh, right now the damage appears to be only in this side I reinvestigated this side I didn't really see any damage on this side so I guess I'm blessed there but that's how they moved in on as, as a swarm and they just started feasting and they were actually kind of in the middle there which I didn't catch right away I didn't see it uh, I was I'm ready to harvest and I'm going in there and inspecting my stuff, looking at where the raccoon damage, and I stumbled upon, I stumbled upon that. So uh, it's always something on the farm. All right, folks, uh, until we meet again, we'll see you later.